here with Jack from Midwest Deer Survey. Jack's been here before. Really appreciate you coming back, Jack. Flying a thermal drone. It's so cool. Now, it's a long ways from hunting season, so, you know, everyone quit sending hate mail. Jack, you're flying over to help us do a survey of our deer herd. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. We're going to fly the proving grounds too today and see how many deer we find. Yeah, and you're looking at something right now, so it's really cool to see. I love not only the numbers and all that, but where deer are at a certain time of day and it's cloudy to weather conditions. There's so much information that can be learned real time. And you can see all the deer versus a GPS collar on a couple of deer. This is way less expensive, totally legal. You don't have to have permits like capturing deer. So fascinating. We're going to go on with this and Jack be telling us what he's seeing, what's going on. This is fascinating, folks. And I recommend everyone use this tool to help manage the deer herd where they hunt. And thinking about the accuracy of this, Jack, I think I heard you say you've even seen some sheds on the ground. Yep, I've been able to, to find sheds with this thing, so it's pretty cool, awesome technology we're able to use. Yeah, I mean, you know, technology folks, we all know it's just changing my leaps and bounds. If you can find a shed that's not really giving off much of a heat signal, this is a thermal drone, think how easy it is to find even a fawn or a deer. Uh, there's a deer moving you're looking at, but, and then of course they can zoom in with the camera and tell if it's a buck or doe, even when the bucks have shed this time of year, you can see the pedestals and everything, so. Yep, we're able to see the, the pedicles. Yeah, really cool. Well, heavy on the bucks so far. All right, we like heavy on bucks. Man, we are so dry. We should have had Jack come down way before now because Jack brought the rain. So we're gonna have to hop in the truck here to finish this survey up. A little rain shower. We need rain desperately. A little rain shower come in, so we hopped in the truck, but the drone's still flying. It's not messing with it, is it, Jack? Nope, this thing's good in the rain, so we're good to keep going. So right when Jack got up and got going, he took off of our largest food plots on the ridge top, so nice level place here. And right off the point, just a little bit off there, there's a couple deer bedded there. Of course, this time of year, almost all the acorns are gone. They're just starting to, the red oaks hold on low, and they're starting to be gone. And we've got a really good crop of a green cover fall blend out here. Still rise, the dominant thing showing right now. Clover's just getting ready to come on. And we treated all that with, you know, the biologicals from Soil Pro. And so it's really good, better than a normal dry wheat or rye or oats. It's really high quality. We've had that tested and it doesn't surprise me that deer are bedded right by that great food source. When Jack's flying, he's not just looking again to see a deer out there, like maybe you and I in a helicopter looking to see a deer. Of course, he's using a thermal drone, so it's that amount of heat coming off there is what makes deer so easy to spot and why this is such an effective tool. And it is raining, and it's interesting that the deer we've seen were not in the few standing cedars left. Everyone says, oh, you can should be cutting all the cedars. They were in areas where we've already cut cedars. Just once again, the evil cedar, uh, people think it's great cover and it's not. These deer were not in cedars that Jack had picked up. Chewing the cud, deer, of course, are ruminants. They will ingest, get it in their rumen, go in the cover, like this deer bedded there in a little brushy area, and then regurgitate it, chew it up, and swallow it back down. That's actually their number one predator defense mechanism, is being able to get out in the open and ingest, or just gobble down a bunch of food real quick, then go and cover, and and regurgitate it, chew it up. If they had to stay out in the open and chew it real fine all the time, they'd be exposed to predation a lot more. But it's interesting there, we're right next to cedars, but bedded not in the cedars. Very interesting. Yeah. It's interesting, those food plots have been filling up with deer. Where are they right now on our trail cameras? There's a few. Perfect example of what deer do in the rain. Actually, the GPS research says that bucks tend to bed and does move a little bit more in the rain, but she's bedded down. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, PH Outdoors, Black Widow Bows, Moultrie Mobile, Steel, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, Fourth Arrow, Soil Pro Outdoors, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Burris Optics, and Redneck Hunting Wires. They just moving a little bit to a different part of the Proving Grounds, the view down there. Probably could fly from here, but kind of on the edge of the range. You want to get down there and make sure we got plenty of battery for a good view. The view, I'm looking at a monitor here, 
is awesome. I would like to have just a picture or a map made with this. It's just awesome. Is that something you could do, Jack? Could people hire you to make a map of their property? It is, yeah, Grant. We uh we can actually send the drone up and take you know, anywhere from one to 3,000 pictures of your property and stitch them all together and make a really high resolution. Oh, uh, we're gonna do that, folks. We're in a county that has LIDAR, which is really high resolution stuff. This is even better. I mean, it, this is amazing. This is such an incredible tool, besides the thermal drone part and seeing the critters. There's gonna be some turkeys. It is, look at that. That is so cool. Oh, look at all that. There was like six or eight there, wasn't there? Yeah. Oh, he's breeding a hen. Yeah, he's breeding right there. He's breeding a hen. You ask when turkey breeding starts, this tom is on top of a hen right there. Few people get to see this. I've seen it a few times when I've been hunting. Here we are at the end of March, and Missouri sets their seasonal later for this particular reason. Heck yeah. Big old mature tom. And this is an area where we cleared cedars, folks, and burned. You can see it greening up right by, right between some food plots there. That's a great area there. We're getting a, a warning on here that says high, high wind speed, but down at ground level where the turkeys are, you can see his fan a little bit, but they're out of the wind down there. They're on the side of the slope where it's not too windy. It's just great hunting. That's turkey's gonna be out of the wind if they can in an open area, that's the strut zone. Where we cut cedars, you can see some residual cedar limbs where we burn there laying around. And it's greening up. It's ideal turkey habitat with nesting area right off to the side of it. Look at that Jake and strut. Look at that fan on that Jake strut in there. Always good to see Jake's. It's some bright red, isn't it? Man, you know, he's excited, right? You can tell their waddles all fully engorged with blood. That head is just brilliant like a light bulb right now which is a, another cool thing. They're in an area of native vegetation when there's a food plot right down the road. And they're, not, they're gonna use that food plot too, but don't ignore native vegetation. Yes, it's like, is it six hens? Six hens, two jakes, and a tom. There's a perfect, you can see that jake fan versus a mature tom fan. Look how white the edge of that jake fan is versus this toms on the tail feathers. That tom's trying to keep those jakes away from the hens. Right there in that little strut zone, looky, where there's no cedar limbs right there in that little strut zone right there. Very cool. All right, let's go find a four-legged beast out there. That was very cool. So obviously another area where we failed all the cedars, cut the cedars and burned, and they're feeding on the native vegetation greening up. Look at the mane on that deer. Look how black the mane is. Again, high wind velocity. We're getting a warning, high wind velocity. These deer out in this open area, not in thick, where we've killed the cedars, not in standing cedars. Jack, as always, I, that's like, I don't know, watching a NASA takeoff or something. That's just so thrilling to me. You did 100% coverage of the ranch. We did, yep. Found almost a one-to-one -one ratio of antler to antlerless. This time of year, it's a little tough to tell fawns from does. Those button bucks are pretty big right now. Pretty much one-to-one -one ratio in there. Which is great. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. But we harvest every year way more, we harvest about five does for every buck, but our neighbors don't. So we have to kind of make up some ground. That's probably true for a lot of serious deer managers, unless you're in a big deer block where a co-op where everyone's mansion same. Your neighbors are probably gonna take more bucks, so you may have to make up a little slack. We certainly do here. We love eating venison, so that's okay with me. Uh, it's interesting, most of the deer we saw were on a higher elevation, three quarters of the ridge or more up, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And not in, we still, everyone thinks we've killed every cedar on the property, that's not true. We'd be flying by areas we hadn't cut cedars in an area where we'd cut cedars and burn and that's where the deer would be. I don't think we saw any in the thick cedars, did we? We did not, no. Not in those heavily cedared yeah. areas, nope. Yeah, so 40 deer we saw today, a little bit light rain on and off, not heavy rain. Most of the deer were bedded, some were up. But we're flying, you know, 9, 10, finished up about 11. So you'd expect a lot of deer to be bedded uh, this time of year. A lot of deer were actively chewing their cud. You'd see them bedded down. Jack's camera is awesome on the drone. So see them chewing their cud. They weren't, you know, flat out sleeping. Deer sleep about two hours a day based on research. Uh, buck groups, right? They're in bachelor groups. So we saw one where there's a buck off by some does, right? I remember that one group. Most of them are bachelor groups or antlerless groups. Saw some turkeys. This is really cool. 
saw a tom breeding a hen. Missouri's season opens mid-April every year, so they like to set seasonal late, so a lot of the breeding's already taken place. Uh, and that turned true today. That was a neat group. It was one mature tom, full fan, two jakes, and that tom, when he wasn't on hen, was certainly strutting on that side, keeping the jakes at bay. It was just cool behavior to watch, and five or six hens, so nice little group there. So a great day. Not only I learned about the deer herd and the turkeys, we're seeing squirrels, folks, it's that precise. We'd see a dot and I'd get all excited. Jack does this all the time, so he'd, he'd call it X hundred yards out. No, that's a squirrel. So Jack does this all the time, I get excited. But I also learned about the lay of land because when he flips this from thermal to full color, I mean, you're seeing cedar sticks on the ground. He's finding shed antlers. And I can see the detail from that angle more than me walking there. So I'm going to get Jack to actually make a map. He can take, take all this and stitch it together and make a really high, it's not really a map, it's an aerial image. It is, yep. But higher quality than what we're used to. Flying about 400 feet high, I think. Yep. With a high quality camera, going slower than a jet streaming by. So super high quality. When we, whenever we do that and get that done, we'll share that with you. That's the service Jack offers that I'm super interested in. Jack, your summary, did I summarize all this okay? Yeah, I think so. Um, it was great to see those turkeys. Great to see that one-to-one -one ratio. And that's that, that's what we're shooting for. Um, you know, doe harvest paying off seeing that. Um, you know, deer grouped up, kind of kind of what we thought we'd see, but great day for this. And it's always a pleasure to come back and, and work yeah. on the proving ground. So thanks for having me. Yeah, and, and Jack's a true professional. I don't, you know, Jack does his own business, but if you're a serious deer manager, this is something you want to check into because you're going to learn a lot. Besides being entertained, you're going to learn a lot. So Jack, truly thanks. And we'll do this again. Lee's wrong, but maybe take a look pre-hunting season just to see if we see something bopping around. That'd be okay with you? Yeah, great, great time to fly in the summer, so. Yeah, I always like learning a lot. So we've had Jack actually on a prescribed fire and that's the ultimate way to see if you've got a spill over or jump over or a snag burning because Jack can pick it up with the thermal much quicker than we can. So if you're doing a big burn, that's another safety measure you can use if you're worried about escapes or something like that. But learning about deer is always a great way to get out and enjoy creation, even though this is a higher technology than what we usually use, but you don't need technology to learn about your life. We know we can seek the creator's word and apply it to our lives daily. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.